Banks off the cuff. I'm Adam Banks, and welcome back in the studio with me, Nellie. Hello, everyone. It's been a long, long time. It's been about five or six weeks since you've at been least. on the show, at least, that you've done a podcast with me. Why? What have you been doing? Uh, Babysitting. Babysitting mm-hmm. for six My weeks. Baby. For six weeks. Yeah, it was. It was. It made me tired. <laughs> I'm sure it did. Well, Nelly, you got some good news today. Do you want to tell the world about it? I had a lump in my breast. I've had breast cancer once, but it was uh, negative, so everything's good. Yeah, good Thank news. Thank the Lord. Yes, absolutely. Thank the Lord. You know, Praise God. We talked about how important it was to uh, thank God and everything that yeah. you do. And anytime right. you hear good news, you want to thank Him. So, uh, did you thank Him in the car? When did you thank Him? Soon as she told me, so she's, right there laying on the table before I got dressed up, anything. Did she look at you like you were weird? No, or she would, no, she was just smiling. She said, "Bless your heart." You know, that's what I said too. You know, I said, uh, "Well, you know, I went mm-hmm. in for because um, I had a, you know, I was sick the yeah. other day. I had an infection, yeah. and I had to go get treated with antibiotics." And, um, you know, they ran all kinds of tests, all kinds of sexual uh, STD tests. Just all, everything. HIV tests. Dude, all they thought you had things. funk in the mouth. Well, no. <laughs> that would have been scary, but no. Was, uh, luckily, it was nothing to be worried about right. at all. It was just, you know, um, something that I got over. Infection. Yes, that I got over pretty quick. But. Everything else? They tested. The doctor came in. She said, your test results came back. And let me tell you, that. Five seconds when they're standing there and they know your fate and they know like yeah. what's about to be said. That five seconds ain't that nerve wracking. Yes, yeah, it's very because when I walked into when my doctor when I had breast cancer before he looked dead at me and said, "Well, it was cancer." Oh my god! And I think that's the way to do it. How it's did that? Done, it's how, over. how did that hit you? Did that hit you like a yeah, gun? Yeah, because because I'm sitting there saying the whole time it was. Do some people get cancer and not have to do anything yeah. for it? Really? Yeah. What kind of Jill cancer? Jill didn't have no kind of treatments. She had radiation, she said. I thought she told me she didn't have that. No, maybe she said she didn't have chemo. No, she told me she had some radiation. But so, anyway, there's these different treatments that you can get, uh, but it's not chemo for cancer. So, I mean, I guess not everybody that has cancer goes through chemo, correct? They have some pill forms of chemo, and they have, you know, where you don't have to have a. A port and all that. Yeah. They have uh, the radiation. Yeah. That's such a terrible just, thing to just to have. And cancer. it just burns you. Yeah. It burns. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, the American Cancer Society does a lot of great things, a lot of research. Right, out right. To those. We should donate to them. Yeah. We should do the an off-the-cuff um, water bucket challenge. For the Let's do it for breast cancer. And do it for breast Well, do you think there's... I feel like that there's so much awareness already about breast cancer. Come but, on, Adam, come on! You see the pink. These are for women that can't afford to get mammograms. Older so people. So you're wanting not to really donate towards awareness. You want to donate actually to like low income women or offer a um, like a, a women who a don't have health insurance unit that maybe would travel a median area. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And go give free mammograms for yeah. a day. Yeah. You know, I mean that's I mean it's it's an amazing organization. It's yeah. an amazing uh, society. Uh, they do a lot of great things. So we'll put that on the list, and we'll um, we'll see how many people they think they can see. Yeah, we'll visit that again. Yeah, on a uh, on a later date. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have every now and then I watch a little Netflix, yeah. and I finally. Um, Got Nelly talked into going on to Netflix and watching Breaking Bad. Because I've never seen but a couple episodes. But you've seen how it's amazing. amazing how amazing the show is. Like it's been nominated for all, like every Emmy, every major Emmy you can think of. Best actor right. won. We won it. Brian Cranston. Best, uh, best drama. Breaking Bad. It uh, won. Best actress. Anna Gunn, who plays Skylar, yeah. his wife, uh, and best supporting actor Jesse, mm. uh, the you know the young kid on there. They all. Win Emmys every time. I think they're the nominated. guy with the crutches should win something. He didn't win anything. You oh, know? I like him. <laughs> well, well, I like him too. But why do you think he's so good at acting? Just because he just looks at it the way he says it. Yeah. I mean, it's just like it's something he says every day. It ain't like he's, you know. Yeah, but you know, in real life, he really has 
So is it several palsy? Yeah. He's an actor who really does have it. Not as severe as what it is on the show. Mm-hmm. But well, he, I've seen much more severe cases. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When but, I used to work at school, we yeah. had the uh, handicap class. But that's another. But yeah, that's another one. But so, what do you Special think? Needs. What do you think of Breaking Bad so I love far? It, love like, it, love you're it. on episode seven of like season one. Is it six or seven? Six or seven. Um, the episode that you just finished. You found out all about gray matter. Yeah, the, uh, and I just I just understood. I mean, found out about the uh, uh, dope and all that crap. There. <laughs> They're getting ready to do it. I can't even call all the drugs dope. dope. <laughs> so you call methamphetamine dope? I put it just in my little category. You, could, <laughs> you know, Nellie Nellie's got you know she's got cleaning supplies. You know where she'd have pledge, Windex, you know, mm-hmm. paper towels. Uh, she has food. You know, where she'll have, you know, her cakes, her chips, and then she'll have dope. Which means <laughs> dope. Or meth. No, pot, I can't make Pills. Be like, you don't have... Nellie doesn't have a medicine cabinet. She has a dope cabinet. Oh, I do not. <laughs> God. <laughs> make a girl dream. When I first met you, when I first met you, I... Th- you know how they say first impressions is everything? Yeah. Well, it lasted a long time on you. Like, I couldn't shake the fact that you wasn't a troublemaking, drug-using, party animal woman when I first met you. And the reason that was, seriously, is because, like, you just struck me. You're, how long, 55? A lot of 55-year-old women don't go out. They don't party. They don't socialize. They don't have a, a good time like you do. So, only... The only 55-year-old women that usually do that are people like my aunt, Deanna, who's wild and pussy. <laughs> she does that, but she's wild on another level, and I thought that's how you were. Oh, no. And, uh, you know, the more I got to know you I, and the way i seen you with your granddaughter the past couple of weeks, how you babysit her and stuff, I mean, you're just very settled down, so you can enjoy both worlds. Yeah. You enjoy life. Like, you, you really right. live and, life And people fullest. that, just because you go out, don't mean you go out and... Bring somebody home every time you turn around. No, like you go out several go times. Out all by, always, by myself. You know, I like going out and just hanging out with my friends. I you do know, too, but I, I like to drive because when I'm done, I can go home. And I always make sure that it, I wait at least an hour and a half before I leave. You know, and, and for me, going but out. Drinking nothing but water. Going out is, is not for me like picking up people. Like the person that I want to be with, the person that I want to date. my friend. Or the person I want to date or marry is not going to be somebody I want to meet drunk at a bar. Like, right. I just want to go out and hang out with my friends. If I so happen to meet somebody, yeah. you know, a, a lovely young lady there, I would love to sit there and just, you know, yeah, talk. talk with her, mack on her, whatever. You know, yeah. I'm just... But, you know, that's just not my main objective when I go out. It's that's just... just I, that's, that, that's not my objective at all. <laughs> She's just... I live by myself out. long enough to where it's, it's like, this is really nice. Do you think I that don't people... Have to fuck with nobody. Do you think that people have to live by themselves quite a while to realize that? Yes. I do, too. And I'll tell you what. The reason I feel like I'm so independent and so it's uh, because confident... because you live on your own. And so confident and, and know who I am. Because I really do know who I am. You know, I've learned out so much about myself. When you live alone, mm-hmm. you find out... More about who you are. Absolutely. And, and you, you, even when I was a kid, I mean, right out of high school, I was out of there. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I left home at 18. What time? What, how old were you? 18. You were 18? Did you ever go back? Never lived again? No, I did for a little while when uh, I left uh, Mary Elizabeth's dad. You see, I didn't. See, just for a few months. Now, for me. A couple months. For me, I would go home in the summer. Mm-hmm. But... I felt like when I left for college, it was honestly, it was it was kind of it was over. Like I, I didn't go back much at all. Like mm-hmm. yeah, home, I didn't. I stayed there in the summers. I would stay with my grandfather when I come in on the summers. I had a terrible relationship with my stepfather. Yeah, I know you did. I mean, we had words all the time. I punched a hole through the wall because he made me so angry. Instead of punching him in the face, yeah. I punched him in the wall. My mom just, you know. Uh, she didn't blame me. She knew I was angry mm-hmm. because I was very upset at him. And I just I just left and really never returned. Mm-hmm. So I've been on my own since I was 18. You know, yeah. I mean, so that's quite, a, that's eight years. And you learn so much about yourself. Lord. And, you know, coming up on three years, I've lived by myself. Well, this is the longest I've ever lived by myself. Yeah, it's nice. Do you like well, it? I love it. I love it. 
And if you want to have company or you want to just get up and go somewhere, you just do. You just, That's why I don't have pets either. They're I, worse than having children. They are. You know what? Trying and, to get somebody to keep them. You know what? And, and animals, it, the, house, nasty. the house, there's no place for an animal. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with me? I agree with you. There should be 10, no. 10,000 a million percent. There should be no animals in the house. That's right. for out. They're an outside animal. Who? I ain't gonna let no dog sit at my kitchen table. Or no cat crawl up on it. Ooh, and you ain't see, nothing nastier you than s- you seeing cat hair flying through there somebody's eat. house and they want you to eat. Yeah, and, yeah you go to somebody's house uh, if they got and they're cats, cooking on the stove I don't and you eat. look up and you see mm-hmm. pots and you see cats walking around at boys and they want to serve you in them plates with cat hair all going down I your know, throat. You know, in about six hours I could be at Kim's in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And I won't go because she's got four fucking cats in an apartment. Now, see, I would be... I don't be, think so. I'm scared of cats in a way. I really am. Like, there's three things I'm scared of. Snakes, cats, and alligators. And since we're talking about cats, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about cats. About how scared I am of them. I couldn't sleep in an apartment with four cats. I would be scared to death they were going to squeeze into the door and attack me. Yeah, I can't breathe. I just don't I mean, like I feel cats. like they take my breath away. God, they're scary. They Bones hiss at you. Bones used to say that about babies. Mm. If they got in a crib with the baby, it would take its breath away. And uh, I've never heard that. I have. <laughs> so, wait it's a minute. Freaky. If a cat got in the crib with the baby, the baby would suffocate. Mm-hmm. Or could. It and you know, people breath. are so obsessed with their cats. They'll and let, their dogs. They'll put their baby and their dog yeah, sleeping. Yeah, and, and a little baby is this big dog's head laying up here, tongue licking it in the face. I mean, like, listen, I'm not a dog hater. I love dogs. I, I do, but they're for outside. Yeah. They're for an outside. They're, they're out, they would rather be outside. Yeah. You know, and I know some dogs are house dogs, but come on. You know, Mm-mm. we as humans. It's all in how they're raised. We were meant to... You know, now, them that ain't that long, some of them little bitty ones you see, yeah. now they can't live outside, but something would eat them in a heartbeat. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Those little bitty ones. The yeah, but still, I don't want hogs. the little bitty ones running around. I don't you know? want none running you know, around. I mean, I would be highly upset if I walked into your apartment one day and you had a dog sitting on the couch. Tell me about it. I'd be upset at you. Tell Merlissa's daddy brought a goat home one time. We lived a town. A goat? A goat. And wanted to have it in the house? Wanted to put it... No, he wanted to have it. I said, you lost your fucking mind. He wanted mind. to put it in the house. He was an idiot. What room? Let me tell you, Merle Elizabeth was a baby. He kept bringing home a pit bull pup. I said, you get that motherfucker out of here. <laughs> well, he did nothing nothing to him, but he kept it. And that sucker well, eat really all our some furniture. Well, you really had Huh? You really had some sense. Oh, he used to beat me. Oh, Where that's was that. Oh, so it's that one. Yeah. Oh man, so now that if you if you could live that over again and you were put in that situation, knowing now what you know now about how it feels to be beat and the mental abuse and physical abuse, would you take it? What would you do? You know what I'd really like to do, and it yeah. sounds horrible. Yeah, go ahead. But I wished I had uh a gun and had my license and to carry and all that. And I'd have shot it. I'd blowed that some bitch's head off first time he hit me. Just blowed it off. I, I could. I could lay down. I could shoot him. Lay down. Let it. Lay down. Sit down right beside him, laying there, and put a, a plate on his chest. And I could sit there and eat my supper. Are you? S- That's ugh. how upset and tore up I'd be. Just you know. What would you have for supper? <laughs> Probably spaghetti. Oh, God. <laughs> no, I, I just... You just don't like him. Well, he's not worth the airy br- breeze right. or the ground he stands on. And, you know, somebody who physically... Did he physically and mentally abuse? Oh, yeah. So verbally. Some, so somebody who physically, mentally, verbally think. abuse, I would hate. He raped me at seven months. At, at eight months pregnant. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, wow. It was awful. Eight months pregnant. It was the most disgusting, horrible thing I've ever been through. So how can you be around him? How can you look at him? I don't. I haven't seen him in years. And, well, I guess since McKenna's been born because he come to the you hospital. You haven't seen him since McKenna's been a baby. Mm-mm. So I have seen and at your apartment. it was a long time before that. I've seen at your apartment, your daughter Mary, you call him, her dad, your husband. Mm-hmm. And you hear his voice. What does it sound like? This makes me want to puke, and he always makes sure he says something to me. 
Like, what do you mean? When she's on the phone with him. Like, what does she say? He told, well, or he'll say something that he knows that'll piss me off. He told McKenna the other day that, uh, yeah, honey, I know you Nana's mean. <laughs> Kenna said, no, my Nana no mean. Um, you know, you, I hate your impersonations, like, of, like, Kenna. Kenna. And well, I hate, you know what? I don't really give a shit. You know, There's a lot of things you do. I, cigarette. Okay. Adam but, is a cigarette thief. No, I don't even smoke cigarettes. Ladies and gentlemen, oh my God. I want to thank you for listening <laughs> to the show. I'm Adam Banks. Nelly, always a pleasure working with you. And hey, um, Great to see you, Adam. Awesome. So I will see you in the next episode. I don't like that Murray and Vic have pants in this. I remember when, I remember, I remember.